What's up YouTube? I'm Mr. No Name, or Max as people know me in the real world, and today I'm going to be talking about in just about 45 seconds about the best gaming equipment for end of 2013 slash the beginning of 2014. But first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about this gameplay real quick. So it is a 3v3 competitive MLG variant S&D um, match, and this is the third map in it in a best of three series of course and these first two rounds are really really good so pay attention pay attention to those i may be cutting out a couple rounds it just depends on how long this commentary goes i don't really know yet so if you see a round skip that's what happened so into the thing that i'm talking about today which is the best gaming equipment uh first of all i need to talk about the order of importance and this would be the console then the monitor then the headset then the controller and then accessories and this is all for console gamers I don't know enough about PC to really help you guys out that much but uh, some of it can be applied to PC but this is mainly for console gamers just so you guys know before we get too far into it so going into it the console so new consoles are out Xbox one and PS4 and if you are a competitive player you need the Xbox one because that is what everything is going to be played on uh, it's gonna be 500 bucks and then the PS4 for um, non-competitive players or whatever, the, it is 400 bucks. And honestly, the PS4 is probably a better console. Um, I like Sony more than Microsoft because Microsoft seems like evil, greedy people all the time. Uh, especially at the release of Xbox One, or initially when they first unveiled it to the public. There were a whole bunch of strings attached. It was really awful, but... Anyway, um, if you're competitive, you need the Xbox One. That's that's bottom line. So, yeah. That's that's enough on the consoles, really. You guys know a lot about the console. I don't want to spend too much time on it. So, moving on to the monitor. And this is something that is a little bit tricky. You know, people don't really know what to look for in a monitor sometimes. It took me a while to figure it out. Basically, you, the, the safest way to go would be with the BenQ brand. And they are very, very good with their monitors. They have ones for PC gamers, for console gamers. And the one that I recommend, which is the one that I have, is the GL2450HM. And it's the MLG tournament monitor that they're using, and it's 190 bucks. And uh, just so you guys know, all of these products that I'm talking about, their uh, links to their websites and everything will be in the description below if you want to go check them out. And also, I'm only sponsored by one of these companies, and when I get to it, I'll tell you so that you know that I'm a little bit biased towards you because I don't want to mislead anybody. So yeah, this this monitor from BenQ is the one that I recommend. Um, it's got a two millisecond response time. It's in 1080 HD. It's 24 inches wide, and it has a black finish. Uh, the sound quality straight off the monitor is fairly good. Uh, I'm used to a headset quality though, so it's a, it's not something I really like as much. Uh, the contrast is very good. The colors pop out. Uh, it seems like they have like an anti-glare thing on there because I have a window behind me and it reduces the glare like completely. So it's really good. And yeah, I mean, BenQ, their monitors have been really good. They've been at the tournaments for a while. So I feel like you can trust them quite a bit. And basically, if you don't want to go to with BenQ, just make sure that it's around 24 inches. It's in at least 1080p or HD, I'm sorry, and it has a two millisecond or less delay. You don't want five of uh, five millisecond, which is like the next one, I believe. It just starts to get too slow, really. And, uh, you know, if you're a PC gamer, some of these can get up in like the $500 range, but the console ones stay around 200, it seems like. So, yeah, moving on to the headset. And there's a lot of headset companies as well, so some people get confused on this when they first get into it, but basically, the best headset company right now is Astro Gaming. Some people would disagree with me on this, but in my opinion, Astro is the best. They have a fairly good reputation, I would say. Uh, you know, some other companies would be Turtle Beach and Steel Series, and these are both good companies. I haven't had a Steel Series headset yet, but I've had people, or I've known people who have had them, and they had nothing but good praise for them as well. So they're worth checking into. Turtle Beach tend to go for the more just getting into the headset thing. Uh, they do have some higher end ones, but still they're, they're just not as good. Uh, they're cheap, they tend to break fairly easily. Mine broke within uh, the first year. 
it, it wasn't that great. But, you know, I mean, if, if you're just getting into it, you could. But honestly, I would go for the, the high-end ones at the beginning so that they last. So, from Astro Gaming, they offer PS4, 360, PS3, and PC headsets. And they will be compatible with Xbox One soon. And I'm sure that they will have Xbox One exclusive ones as well. So, if you've got Xbox 360 ones right now, there will be an adapter that will be coming out soon. They have mentioned that. So don't worry too much about that. So the best headset for console gaming right now, I would say, would be the A40s. And uh, the headset without the mix amp is 150 bucks. With the mix amp, it's 250 dollars. And it it's got you know 7.1 surround sound. It's really comfortable. It's adjustable. You can um, balance out the game ch volume versus the chat volume and everything. Um, the, if you play Call of Duty like I do, the explosions sound absolutely amazing. You can hear people all the way across the map. It, it's really, really cool. Uh, there are a lot of wires because it is a wired headset with, along with the mix amp, so it can get tangled easily, but it's what's needed for tournament uh, level players. If you aren't going to be doing competitive, you might want to consider a wireless one, but I still don't think the A50s are as good. With The A50s are wireless, but I, I don't think they're as good as the A40s. I've heard a lot of bad reviews on them compared to the A40s, so just kind of keep that in mind. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, on to the controllers, and I'm going to start... The, there's two companies that I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to start with the one that most people know about, and they're not the ones I'm sponsored with. The other one is but starting off, we've got scuff controllers, and these are what people are used to. You know, con controllers. A lot of people are like, okay, I'm just going to use the one I come with that that comes with the Xbox. That's great, fine, wonderful. But at a certain point, you've got to move on to a better one. Uh, the these scuff controllers, what they offer is they have paddles and trigger stops, and that's that's the main thing to them. And what this allows you to do is it lets you not take your thumb off the analog stick to press buttons. Those buttons that are there, or at least two of them, depending on which one, if you have the scuff hybrid, you can have up to four, and then you don't have to press any of those buttons, but you can press the paddles on the bottom instead with your middle finger or your uh, your third finger. I don't even know what that's called. I think that's your ring finger. I don't know. I don't know my fingers. That's kind of scary, but anyway, you can use some of those, and... Yeah, that's 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 the main thing with the scuff as far as the paddles. And then the trigger stops, what that allows you to do is to not have to press the trigger in as far to activate it. And uh, you can also, I believe, adjust the sensitivity of the triggers as well. And this basically makes you seem like you have faster reaction time and more control. Any semi-automatic weapon fire will be a lot quicker. So, you know, it, it's important to have. And the cheapest controller from them that I've seen, which is the one I have, is $79.95, um, but that is without shipping and it is without any extra things on it. You know, with scuff, when you go in and you start changing things like a dome stick or a non-dome stick or which things you want to program, it starts to kind of add on the prices and everything and then you can have a grip and it adds more money and everything and it's like, hmm, $79, eh? it's looking more like 130 now, but... You know that they're really good controllers. They they are kind of worth it, and they're legal with pretty much every tournament. I mean, I know they're legal in MLG at least. I'm pretty sure EGL. I mean, they're they're known throughout everywhere. Everybody has them. So yeah, that's that's the main company that everybody knows about. The next company, which is what I'm on a trial sponsorship for right now, I'm looking like it's going to be a permanent sponsorship, and it's not me individually. It's the team, and basically. Um, the, the company is Shark Controllers, and it's spelled with a Q. And I apologize. In my previous videos, I was calling these Shark Q controllers. I didn't know that they were actually Shark. It makes sense now, but you know, I'm an idiot. Whatever. But they are basically they're they're based in the UK, and overall, they're cheaper than Scuffs generally, and they look cooler to be honest. Especially if you're in Europe, they are cheaper for sure, as far as the shipping and everything. Um, the biggest problem with them is that they don't, they're, they're not necessarily legal in all the tournaments yet. They're working on that. They're a fairly new company. They've got, I believe, one tournament series under their belt right now that is legal in, and it's not MLG or EGL. It's one that I don't really know about. I don't keep up with, but they're working on it. And they're not too different from the scuffs, so they should be legal fairly soon in all of these bigger tournament series. Basically, instead of paddles, they have 
um, shark fins looking things, and they're technically still paddles. Uh, they do the same job as the paddles with the scuffs, and they have the trigger stops, and they have the adjustability in the uh, level of sensitivity within the triggers. And that, that's what they do, and the designs on them to me just seem kind of cooler. Um, you know, with scuffs, some of them do look pretty cool, but overall the Shark Q ones I think are better. And Shark Q has Xbox One controllers already. As a matter of fact, they've already had them for a week or two, if I remember correctly. So they got on the ball with that faster than scuff. Um, I appreciate that from them, which is really cool. I personally do not own a Shark controller, and I might have just said Shark Q again a minute ago. I'm sorry if I do. I'm so used to saying it, but it's Shark controllers. Anyway, the thing you need to know about these uh, controllers now is the prices. So, for the Xbox One, it's going to be 99 euros. For the Xbox 360 controllers, it's going to be 56 euros. For the shipping inside of the UK, it's going to be 499 euros. And for world shipping, it's going to be 1499 euros. And you can get a discount on this actually if you um if, if, if when you order you use the promo code flight you will get five percent off of your order and you know that helps you and you may wonder what it gives us basically it just it helps us to get a permanent sponsorship with them i believe our trial sponsorship ends on the 20th of december here and if we get a certain number of sales and a certain number of followers on twitter and everything yada 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 then we can get the sponsorship and that's what it'll do for us and then we can do giveaways we'll get things at a discount and be able to you know just help you guys out and maybe even afford to go to some LAN events and whatnot so that's the whole point of that so moving on from the controllers now we get into the accessories and honestly there's really only one accessory that you really need and that's the control freaks none of the others are really that important in my opinion and these control freaks they range from 10 to 15 dollars so they're pretty cheap and what they are, they are analog stick extensions. And they have different grips on them, and you can get them domed or concave, whatever you like. They got different colors and everything. It's They're really nice. And uh, I personally have used four or five different ones in my time of using them, and only one of them has been bad necessarily like it was good but it wasn't as well made as the others it kept breaking and those were the cqc's i bought like three sets of those and they've broken every time within a couple months so i don't recommend those but all the others have lasted for a really really long time like at least six to eight months and it's only 10 to 15 bucks so, i mean they're they're really good and they do help and basically they are meant to help improve your aim and accuracy and everything and the longer extensions are generally for assault rifle players and the shorter ones are meant for more sh submachine gun players and they also have ones that aren't for fps games they're designed for like racing games and whatnot and they have all sorts of weird little things on them i don't know everything i just keep up with the fps ones so yeah that's all you really need to know about the control freaks so as you guys can see we're coming to the end of this video if you enjoyed it then please like comment and or subscribe if you didn't then let me know what I can do better in the comment section below. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out.